Photography is about looking and um, it's about thinking, concentrating, um, inventing, um, uh, and you know, this is what you're sharing with the world. This Growing up, my parents had plates with the Chinese landscape on them. And they weren't from China, they were, you know, chinoiserie from England, you know, just a kind of common plate. But they were very beautiful. And I think, you know, even though you're not so conscious as a young child, you remember those things. In uh, 1979, I applied for graduate school. And um, so while I was at Yale, I was, you know, doing an MFA in photography. And one of the classes I decided to take, the second semester I was there, was um, Chinese painting from the Ming Dynasty. One day we were looking at slides of paintings along the Li River. And, uh, you know, I suggested a, a question. I said, well, why did they make up these mountains like this? Why? You know, was there something in, you know, cultural that I didn't know about that, you know, that inspired them to make these almost fantasy mountains? And um, he said, no, they exist like this. And it's the, the Lee River in Guilin. And, uh, you know, right there, you know, sort of my life changed. I said, well, I have to go there. I have to see that. That's, that's one of the reasons I originally went to China was to see those mountains. After I went to China, um, the first thing I really photographed was the Imperial uh, because I felt it was something that I could understand. And um, in 88, when I was studying at Beijing Yuan Shui, Yuan Shui Shi, um, I lived at Beida. And Beida is right next to Yuan Ming Yuan. Actually, Beida is part of the old Imperial um, ruins. And um, I live right outside of Xiaoyuan. Outside of Xiaoyuan, through the old lakes that are full of lotus in the summer. And as I was studying in the summer, I got to experience that wonderful, sublime, you know, beauty of the lotus in bloom. And this is a small lake, but it was a world. I hadn't really looked so carefully at the lotus, but then when I started to photograph them, I haven't been able to stop since. A lot of people think that because I love Chinese paintings so much that I want to recreate Chinese paintings in my photographs. That's certainly not my intention, but if for some reason they conjure up Chinese painting, that's okay. I mean, I'm using um, black and white as my medium and I make platinum prints. And with platinum prints, I'm sensitizing drawing paper with salts of iron and salts of platinum. And what you end up with in the paper without an emulsifier is, you know, this wonderful set of tones of, you know, from very, very light gray to deep black. And so, in some ways, it can look like an ink painting. You take your, your inspirations and you, you know, and then you use everything else around you and, and somehow they filter in there. But if they're, if they're only just literally um, the paintings, then for me, it's not, I haven't done enough. I haven't put enough of myself and my knowledge and my history in, in the photograph. The China I photographed in 84 was already a palimpest. It was like, you know, um, buildings from the 60s in front of, you know, this ancient building, this ancient building, and bits and pieces showing through like a collage. And um, so, you know, all nations rebuild. When they become prosperous, they want to take down things that they think they don't need anymore, and so they can build the new buildings. And, uh, you know, the romantic ones want to you know keep everything old but you can't really keep everything old but still I lament some of the past I mean um, sometimes when I would there would be six or eight months between the times I would go back to China and there would be you know four lane roads where my hutongs were so you know that part is sad but you knew it was coming you knew it was coming 
and um, but there's still lots of hutongs everywhere and um, you know there's still a street life which I've always loved and um, you know where people play cards and gossip and and um, you know sing dance <laughs> My next Chinese projects are always um, very amorphous. I, I, you know, I will continue um, with a Lotus project until I die. Um, I have been making portraits um, ever since I started going to China, and that's kind of accelerated. I, I really, I, I want to do um, more on the street. There are places that I haven't been, like Hohat, and I want to go there. So I want to do a little bit more traveling. Um, Guilin is always a place that I will go, and Hangzhou. Uh, Guilin is, of course, the reason I first went to China. And um, I feel like, you know, when I die, my, you know, my my spirit will be wandering in, in Hangzhou, and then Guilin, and probably Yuan Mingyuan. <laughs>